If I told you you can get a rental property for about $20,000 that would cash flow very well, I'm talking about a 30% return on your investment, and you could do this from Portland, Portland, Oregon, would you believe me or would you think I was lying to you? I want to know. Because that is what we are doing. And I'm going to break it down for you in the most transparent way possible right now. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show, folks. This is the show where I work with folks like you every day to help you accomplish your real estate goals. And today, we're talking to Elliot. Elliot is from Portland, Oregon, man. Woo! I got me a uh, a mixed relationship with the Portland market, okay? Uh, here's, here's my sitch with uh, all y'all Portland folk, right? We got like a mixed bag. Right? We got a mixed bag of people in Portland. Some people in Portland that watch this show, they get upset. They get upset because I got like a little anti-communist thing going on. Who would have thought? All right, I'm an American, right? And I bag on Portland for being a communist nation quite a bit, right? So that rubs some people the wrong way. And then there's the other segment of the population of Portland that just gets really mad about how I pronounce the word Oregon. I guess it's like Oregon or Oregon or I don't know. I say I say Oregon. Uh, apparently, that's not how you say it. But like, I don't really care. Like, fuck off, dude. I don't know. That's just my accent or what it is. Like, if you say Ohio different than I do, like, good for you. So you get the folks that they don't really feel me in Portland. But then, but then you get the other folks in the Portland market who are like, dude. I'm just trying to be a landlord, man. I'm just trying to invest in real estate, but I can't do it out here in Portland because the pricing is insane. And the landlord-tenant policies that James begs on, like, you know, I mean, yeah, dude, that's true, right? Like, they're squeezing out mom-and-pop landlords, right? They're literally making it impossible for mom-and-pop landlords in the Portland area to exist, right? They're legislating out private landlords, right? That's what's happening out there in Portland, right? So... Some people in Portland, they don't like me talking about it. Other people in Portland, usually quiet. They don't come out on the show and start making comments and yelling about how I pronounce Portland or not Portland. I say Portland fine, but they don't like how I pronounce Oregon. Anyway, they don't really say a lot, but you know what they do? They privately reach out and they actually want to invest in real estate in markets that they can afford and in markets where the government actually allows them to run their business. And that is what my dude Elliot is doing. And Elliot... What I have for you today, sir, property that you can pick up for about 21 grand, 21 grand out of your pocket, and I'm going to project out a 30% return on your investment over the long haul. Not clickbait, not blowing smoke up your butt. I'm going to break down the entire investment on a dollar for dollar basis right now after this quick break. Hey, Steve, what are you doing? Oh, nothing. Just saving money on my rental property insurance. Oh my, Steve. Take me now. Bolton Wise. Real estate investing made easy. Wow, I'm so glad I clicked that link below. Welcome back, folks. This, this is the meat and potatoes of the show. I appreciate you sticking around this long. And I doubly appreciate those of you who did not fast forward through the commercial break. Man, I'm selling stuff. Buy it, man. Jesus. Anyway, here's the property, okay? This property is going to work very, very well. I like this property a lot. As a matter of fact, I think a lot of people are going to like this property. I think we're going to have a bidding war. Why? Because I'm projecting out a 30% cash on cash return, and we're only looking at a monetary investment of $21,250. $21,250 to get yourself a safe, sound 
real estate investment that I believe if everything pans out how I want it to, how I think it should, you'll make around 30%. There is almost no markets in the United States where that can be accomplished, right? But we can accomplish it here. The address is 802 West 9th Street. It's in a city called Lorain, Ohio. Just hit the market at 79900 okay? We need to move quick. This is going to be a brutal bidding war, I guarantee you. I believe the price we need to pay is going to be $85,000, okay? Now, here's what you need to know about Lorain, Ohio. It's in the Cleveland market, right? Cleveland, Ohio is an incredibly popular market on a nationwide scale. I'm going to cruise through some photos so you guys can see the home, why I'm speaking here, right? This is the vacant unit. They've already spruced it up, all right? It's ready to rock. Looks to be completely rent ready. We'll, of course, do more due diligence with the home inspection to verify, but it looks like you got a pretty rent ready unit. And then the other unit has already got a tenant in there. One unit, they're getting seven and a quarter. That unit's vacant. But market rent for these units, what we're going to want to advertise that vacant unit for is going to be 850 The other unit, market rent, 850 as well. 1600 Each of those units are three beds, right? So 19200 right? 19200 in rent, and they're priced it at seventy nine nine, which brings me back to what I was getting into before I got a little off track. It's in the Cleveland market, but it's in this city called Lorraine. If this was in the city of Cleveland itself, this would already be gone, and it probably would have sold for like 115000 okay? But what is so great about Lorraine is it's off the radar, right? Cleveland, <clears throat> you get a lot of investment from all over the country, really, all over the world, honestly. If you are Googling things like, oh, where's the best real estate markets, this or that, or how do you get cash flow? What are the best cash flow markets? All these national publications, they're always ranking Cleveland in the top 10 for all these markets, right? So everybody starts coming to Cleveland, and it's bringing pricing up, okay? Lorraine is like a half hour west, okay? So it's in the greater Cleveland area, but it's off a lot of people's radar. They're so laser-focused, right? The tunnel vision on Cleveland they're missing out on a lot of deals. And to show you like exactly how close it is and how much everybody just refers to Cleveland as opposed to all the other areas, some things you need to know. The city of Cleveland, right? It's like 345,000 people live in the city of Cleveland. The greater area, it's like 4 million people, okay? So there's a lot more to the Cleveland market than Cleveland. Like everyone talks about the most famous Clevelander ever. LeBron James, right? LeBron is the most famous dude from Cleveland. LeBron's not from Cleveland! LeBron is from Akron, which is about a half hour southeast of Cleveland, right? So this property, this city, Lorraine, same distance from Cleveland as Akron, essentially, just in a different direction, right? So it's all in the same area, but no one pays attention. And that allows us to come in and squeak out even better returns, even higher returns than we do in Cleveland. Not to mention, I think the government in Lorraine is much easier to deal with than Cleveland, okay? Cleveland is starting to get uh, a little bit more tenant-friendly than it needs to, right? Like, they got the lead-based paint uh, testing and stuff. That's kind of a pain in everybody's butt, right? So, like, L Lorraine, in my opinion, I think we're doing better in Lorraine. And that's what you're paying me for, right? You're paying me to be the guy in the market who knows what's up, right? Who's here to help you get the best investments? Who's here to shift gears when it's time to shift, to keep you ahead of the curve, to keep you... Uh, ahead of the eight ball or however that saying is something like that with an eight ball. I don't know. Anyway, that's what I do, folks. Two hundred million dollars in sales running the biggest portfolio in the area. Property management, maintenance, construction, insurance anywhere in Ohio. Even if you don't buy through us, reach out to us. Maybe we could lower your insurance premium. I almost guarantee you we can because all we do is landlord insurance. Right. That's what I'm here for. That's what I do. That's what allows investors to invest from anywhere in the country in Cleveland and know my team is on the ground to take care of all the things for them. And it starts here with the show, starts here with education, starts here with showing you guys sneaky good deals like this one that are probably going to fall through the cracks that a lot of people aren't going to notice. Because I can almost guarantee you, all you people that come to Holton Wise, you heard something about Cleveland, but you never heard nothing about Lorraine. Am I right? Love it. Tenant base, very similar to what we get on the west side of Cleveland, too. It's like C-ish, right? It's very good. Okay, so with all that said, 
That's why it's priced so low, but we're still going to have to pay above list price. Again, if this was Cleveland, it would have sold for 115 already. I want us to pick it up for 85 Now, if we factor in the market rents I've given you already, 1600 19200 for the year, I believe after fixed and variable expense estimates to pay Holton Wise to handle this investment for you, you're looking at a clear NOI of approximately eight sixteen a month, right? That's almost ten grand a year under normal operating circumstances. Won't be the same every month, won't be the same every year. Unlimited amount of variables at play when you are investing in rental real estate, folks. But it should shake out, right? If you owned like ten of these things over thirty years, I would anticipate that to be your average performance each each and every year, right? or over the totality of the investment. It would average out to that, right? There'll be peaks, there'll be valleys, right? So at 85K, right, we're going to come in 5,100 above list to ensure we get the deal. You put down 21 and a quarter, bank kicks in 63 and three quarters, and if you don't have a lender, I will get you one, right? I have lenders for you guys. They loan to investors in all 50 states. They also loan to investors out of the country. We have private lenders, hard money lenders. We got the whole shebang. And if you're watching this show, just trying to learn, and you're interested in new properties and you want my list of lenders, just send my team an email. We will get that to you, right? So with all that, I believe we're looking at a 31% long-term cash-on-cash return with market rate tenants or a 12 cap. Super solid deal. It is a 100-year-old property, though, right? So when we do that inspection, you have to understand, you're not getting a new roof, you're not getting new furnaces, you're not getting a new hot water tank, okay? Those are probably going to be mid to end of life, right? Like, take furnaces. They take uh, a lifespan. They usually have a lifespan of about 30 years, okay? They usually cost about three grand to replace, right? So if I'm a seller and I got a furnace that's 22 years old and it still works, why would I replace it? Of course I wouldn't, right? So don't be alarmed by that, right? It's built into the super cheap price. Same thing with hot water tanks, although the price there is about a grand, and they last about 15 years. Roofs last about 30. Cost this roof, eh, it's probably about a 7000 Ah, there's a lot of stuff going on. Maybe like an $8,000 roof, right? Like, uh, this is like a unique thing, and that's going to add some cost, truth be told. That's like not something we have a million of. So, like, we're probably going to be like eight k and up, maybe like eight to nine k for a roof like this. But, again, same same thing applies, right? If I'm selling this property and it's got five years of life left in it, why would I replace it? Of course I wouldn't, right? Just build it into the price. So it's a screamer of a deal. We can get it for 85 k It is a hell of a deal. We'll rent the vacant unit uh, to a market rate tenant, probably Section 8. That's how you get the most consistent payers, folks. I love the Section 8 program. I know a lot of people bag on Section 8. I don't. People have this thought that, like, Section 8 tenants are going to be worse than cash-paying tenants. Your tenants are going to be determined. The quality of your tenants are going to be determined by the quality of your asset, right? If you got A-grade properties in an A-grade neighborhood, you're getting A-grade tenants. B, you're getting B. C, you're getting C. D, you're getting D. F, you're getting F. You get what I'm saying? So when you start getting into C, D, and F, okay, you're already getting C, D, and F grade tenants. You ain't getting B and A grade tenants, right? So when you're into the tenants that are at that level of risk, the biggest problem with them is their inability to pay rent all the time, frequency of evictions, right? So you eliminate that problem by going Section 8, right? Well, when you're in A and B, you know, A and B tenants don't usually get evicted by non-payment of rent. So, yeah, you avoid Section 8 in those kind of neighborhoods. But C, D, and F, Section 8, in my opinion, is the more desirable type of C, D, and F tenant, right? So we'd want to go Section 8. And then the other tenant that's been in there for a while, we'll just rock them at their current rent and slowly increase it so you don't have to incur any turnover cost to eventually get them up to market rent. So this deal, friggin' screamer, let's go. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.